This is going to be a tutorial, an online uh, recorded lecture, uh, basically the same as I would do in the classroom, uh, showing you and going over all the steps to do uh, Excel Project 1, Excel Module 1 Project. I already went to MindTap and I downloaded uh, the two files that I need, which are the Excel start file and the instructions. The instructions are in Word format, so when I double click the instructions, Word will open. By the way, I'm doing all of this tutorial on Mac, but it's exactly the same on Windows. Uh, everything I do, maybe other than, you know, a few little uh, cosmetic little changes which I will point out but uh, all the steps and all the um, commands are exactly the same so my instructions are open in Word let me make them a little smaller so I can dedicate the rest of my screen to Excel and the Excel of course as we know all the start files start with underscore one this will open in Excel and let me resize this window on this side and this way I can hide everything else and I can just keep moving between my instruction files in Word and my project in Excel. As always, the start steps are exactly the same as all the projects we have done so far in Word. We have the file called underscore one open and they want us to save it as underscore two. On the Mac, that would require going to the file menu. The file menu on Windows is going to be next to home. On the Mac, it's on the top left side of the screen, but it's still the same commands. Save as. I will change the one to a two. These are all the steps that we've done before, so we shouldn't have no problem with them. And the other step is that they want to ensure uh, that with that file open, ensure that your first and last name is displayed on cell B6. So here it is. B, row six. I have my name. This is just like that uh, signature that we had on the uh, footer in most of the Word files. Let me close this and start our first steps, project steps. Uh, they always start with a little story. As the office administrator, you use Excel to maintain personnel data and summarize cash flow. You are finalizing the personnel and cash flow worksheets for the current week. And here's the first thing they want us to do. Begin the personnel on the personnel worksheet by cutting the contents of the range B1, B2 and paste them pasting them on range A1, A2. So first of all, I'm going to find the personnel worksheet. Here it is at the bottom. We got three worksheets. Remember, worksheets are just like um, pages uh, in the workbook. So personnel worksheet. And they want me to take the range B1, B2. What does that mean? On the column called B, here's B1, B2. One, and if I'm not sure, it shows me its address here. As a matter of fact, let me make the screen bigger so we have fewer distractions. Um, let me even zoom in so we can see the range we're working on nice and big. And here's B1 and B2. To, uh, to select both of them, I hold Shift. Once I select one and I select the other one, they're both selected and they want me to cut one of them. Cut can be found under the edit menu um, or here under home, which is cut. What cut does on Excel, it does not make things disappear, but makes you know those marching ants kind of flow because it's basically waiting for me to tell it where to paste it and then they want me to paste it on the range a1 a2 not either or but both so i selected a1 i'm holding shift and i'm selecting a2 and i will paste and basically what it did is cut it out of b1 b2 and shifted it to a1 a2 i'm going to go back to this and mark this step as done. 
Uh, step number two is to adjust the width of column A using auto fit. We've actually done something similar in Word, maybe you remember. To auto fit a column means basically that the text right now is way too wide for this. So instead of dragging it manually, what I do is I move my mouse over the dividing line between A and B. I'm not clicking anything. And once the mouse turns into, the cursor turns into this icon that looks like uh, an arrow pointing left and right, I double click. And what it does is automatically adjust column A to fit the words in column A. That's Tabula Insurance Agency. Uh, of course, I'm not going to forget to save between steps. And now I'm going to step number three. Step number two is done. Step number three is to change the width of column B to 16 points. So that's another way of changing the width. I can, of course, just drag it around and try to see that it reaches 16. That's one way. I'm going to undo, control Z. Um, another way of doing this is right clicking, going to column width. I right clicked exactly on the B, column width, and simply typing 16. And that will adjust it exactly to 16 points. Save. Back to the instructions, and I can mark step number three as done. Uh, by the way, this whole project has, let's see, 21 steps. So I'm probably going to split this tutorial into several videos to make each one of them kind of a, you know, a reasonable length. But we're up to step number four. Uh, change, uh, sorry, uh, enter the values shown in table one into the corresponding cells in range B14 C16. Remember, every time they show a range, I showed that on the very first introductory uh, lecture to um, Excel. This represents the top left corner of the range. This represents the bottom right corner. Top left, bottom right. Uh, they want me to enter these values. And what I probably want to do is this, B14, C16. So these are really the values from B14 to C16. I'm going to kind of cheat. I'm going to highlight all those cells. As you probably remember from class, I like highlighting from end to beginning, but it doesn't matter as long as I have all of these, not the B or the 14 or the 16. I'm going to unbolt them because I know they don't want me to you know, make them bold. I am going to copy them. Here's the copy. I'm going to go to Excel. You can absolutely copy and paste from Word to Excel, especially since they're both made by the same company and belong to the same um, uh, uh, office suite. And I'm going to go to Excel, find the range B, 14 through 16, and here it is. You can clearly see that it's the empty range from here to here. Notice how I clicked top left corner, B14, clicked and dragged until B14 through C16 is uh, highlighted. And now, not only am I going to paste, I'm going to look for the paste with keep source formatting. I can also do this by right clicking, paste special and keep um, Keep so, uh, source formatting, values and source formatting. I'm going to do it from here. It's easier. But even if I just pasted the regular paste, it just pasted. Um, right now, what it pasted is also the colors and everything. So I'm going to undo, control Z, and do the paste, which is keep source formatting, where Mm, let me see. I want to actually paste special and paste just as text. That will be even better. On Windows, that would be achieved by right clicking here, and you would have around here that uh, paste um, that's only text. On the Mac, it's a little hard to find. 
But in any case, if you have any problems copying and pasting, you just fill up those values manually. Save. I try to shorten the um, the process, but you know it'll be easier to just um, type them in or copy and paste them one at a time. I'm going to do the same thing with step number five. Let me mark step number four as done. I'm going to do the same thing with step number five to enter albert.luna.cengage. I know I'm not going to spell that right. Uh, enter into cell D5. Okay. I'm going to highlight unbold because I know they don't mean, want me to do bold and copy. Go to cell D5 which is this one, D5, and just like I did before, edit, paste special, and paste the text only. That way it doesn't paste you know, the formatting with it. I'll repeat again, on Windows, that will be achieved by right-clicking, and there will, is gonna be a paste that looks just you know, text only. Uh, or I could just type it in. Paste special text as long as it ends up looking like this. And also uh, to turn it into a link, I just hit the tab key and that turned it into a link. I'll do it again. It was not, and then I hit the tab key and it recognized. I'll do it again. As soon as I finish typing the M of COM, I hit tab, it moved to the next uh, cell, and it turned the whole thing into a link. Save. Um, and that was um, the first part. Enter in the cell. Then they want me to use the flash fill button using the fill drop down arrow in the editing group on the home tab. Um, fill drop down arrow editing group home tab to automatically enter the codes for the remaining cells in the range. Hint, you must use the flash fill button to properly receive credit for this step. So what I'm looking for is the flash fill. Now let's explain why we need this. Look, the email for this guy, it's their personnel, is Albert Luna and he works for Cengage. So they gave him an email that's albert.luna or lowercase at Cengage. What does that really mean that the email for uh, Tris Marchan is probably, not probably, it has to be Tris, Trish dot Marchan at Cengage and uh, Dorietha Blair, Dorietha dot Blair at Cengage and so on. So it's almost artificial um, intelligence where basically what I'm telling it is, hey, look at this cell in the home editing group. I will find the flash fill button and I will highlight from here all the way to the end, basically telling Excel, hey, use this as an example and fill, flash fill, and look at what it just did. It saved me so much time. It took all the first names from the employee's name, turned them into, or it basically found the pattern that was used in the first one and applied it to all the rest of them. Save. I'll repeat this step again. What I did was select the first one, hold shift and click on the last one or just click and hold and you know, as long as I highlight the whole one, everything including the first one, you see how the uh, that green thing is around the selected range, went to the fill button on the, it's pretty much like, you know, almost all the way to the right on the home uh, tab, clicked, found flash fill and that's it and save.
I'm going to stop here and call this part one of the tutorial and see you in part two. We just completed, I believe, step number four. And we're going to mark this as done and stop the recording. See you at, uh, sorry, that was step five. I'll see you at step six on part two.